it's quite deafening with the cicada chorus going on. And going for a walk is a bit difficult when you have to bypass the numerous carcasses on the sidewalk. Ooh. But I see the seagulls flying around. I don't know if you can see some of them. They're having a feast. Wow. Hello booktube! Welcome back to another Friday Reads video. Uh, so as you saw in that opening video, uh, cicadas are still going crazy around here. They are deafening. Uh, they, they, I didn't raise the volume on that video. You could almost barely hear me above the sound of them. And of course they're everywhere, all over the sidewalks when you're walking. They're flying at you. I've had several close encounters with them. I'm just so creeped out with them. I, I actually, when I have a hoodie on, I was throwing it up over my hood just to kind of keep them out of like my hair or anything like that. One flew right into my hood uh, and got stuck there. So I must have looked like a complete idiot ripping that jacket off and trying to shake the thing out of me. Uh, it was horrible. Uh, and I've had two in the car. One while I was sitting at my lunch break and all of a sudden I looked and I saw this thing climbing up the dashboard with its two beady little eyes looking right at me. Um, managed to get that one out. And then another time, I guess one might've been on me when I got in the car or flew in with me when I was opening up the door and I didn't notice it. So I started driving and then all of a sudden it flew right at me uh, and it did one of those like dodging things and it, I, I saw that it landed right in the seat behind me. So of course now I can't like sit back or anything and I'm driving like this looking for the nearest side street to pull over and luckily I got it out of the car pretty quickly. Like the moment I pulled over and I was gonna go open to the door and it flew to the window and I like opened up the door and it, it got out. So anyway, those things are they're very dangerous but um, there's, there's a lot of seagulls. I don't know if you could kind of barely see them at the end of that video. Um, they are flying around all over the place. I won by uh, the school, um, the schoolyard near me and the parking lot was like white just full of seagulls all over the place just having a little buffet out there <laughs> fine by me anyway um so i have finished about three books since i last uploaded a video i had a bit of a gap where i uh wasn't reading or getting through anything so that's why i kind of skipped the last couple of fridays i've been um you know busy visiting my mom and everything of course and also i've started uh marathoning my way through Game of Thrones. Yes, I'm a little late to the party. I watched some of it a long time ago and then never got around to finishing it. And then um, I happened to notice a couple of the Blu-rays were on sale at work and um, I started just kind of gathering them up. And before I knew it, I had literally all eight seasons. And with my discount and with some of the, the Blu-rays on sale, of course they're used already, so they're already partially on sale, but I get a discount. Uh, and with the money I already had on like my bonus card and everything, the whole Blu-ray set cost me $3.99. I mean, that's a deal you can't pass up. So I've marathoned my way through it and just, I think it was yesterday morning, I finished the last episode. It just blew my mind. The effects and everything, just a really, really great story. I, I love the ending. I thought everything was just fantastic. So I know it's a hit or miss with that last episode. Maybe I would have liked to have seen it go a different way, but I still think it was a great, great series overall. So... Uh, I just couldn't stop watching it. So I didn't get a lot of reading done, but I did manage to get through these three items. So I'll go ahead and talk about them now. Uh, first up was uh, S.E. Babin's or Babin's uh, Hardback Homicide. It's the one with this Persian cat named Poppy on it. And it's book one in a shelf indulgence cozy mystery series. And our main character is Dakota. She owns a bookshop called The Tattered Pages. And one day, uh, they, I guess they specialize according to the Goodreads is that they specialize in like quirky kind of books, things like that. Uh, one day these two sisters come in um, and they're looking for uh, a rare edition of a particular book. Uh, she doesn't really necessarily deal with rare books, but she can do the research and, and track them down. So she sets about doing that. One of the sisters seems to be a bit in poor health and the other one isn't quite that friendly. Uh, but anyway, the book eventually comes in, she goes to deliver it, and the one who was sickly, whatever, she finds her dead. Uh, but then it suddenly looks like it's more than just ill health that took her out. It's something a little bit more murderous. And now um, she's sort of drawn into this murder mystery, uh, not only because she happened to find the body, but also because the woman owned a rather substantial rare book collection, and they're wondering if that could be a motive for the murder. Um, and I have to say, it's a fairly quick read. Unfortunately, the writing wasn't really up to par. It, it was a very 
predictable plot. I mean, he almost knew from the get-go who the murderer is. The the way the murder was committed was a little bit unique, but overall, it's like I already know who who did it. You know, it was wasn't that difficult to figure out. So it was a bit of a letdown in that case. So don't know if I'll continue with the series on that one. The audiobook I finished was Kim Harrison's American Demon. Uh, this is book 14 in the Hollow series about a witch named Rachel Morgan. Uh, she owns a bounty um, bounty hunting service with uh, Ivy, who's a vampire, and Jenks, who's a pixie. And they live in this uh, abandoned church. Uh, they've renovated it. It's kind of like sacred ground. Uh, but by the end of the first 13 books, uh, they've been through a whole lot. The characters have changed. Lots have happened to all of them. We can't really get into all that detail without you know, spoilers, because we are now, like I said, on book 14 here. But it seems at this point in their lives now, a lot has happened and wondering whether they're going to stay together and continue to working together uh, or even um, things have happened. The, the church has been badly damaged, whether they're going to renovate it. Um, and anyway, uh, as this story progresses, they're in that kind of situation right now, deciding what their next steps are. And suddenly there's a new demon in town. There's lots of different species of um, Inderlanders, as they call them, witches, demons, fairies, pixies, uh, werewolves. Uh, I can't even name them all. Banshees. You, you come across everything in this series. And all the characters are just so fantastic. Uh, this book did begin with like almost a glossary in terms of various characters and terminology and things like that. It would have been nicer to have that maybe in a physical format uh, so I could kind of reference back if I needed to, but it does go over all of that so you're kind of caught back up in the series and where things are going, but um, there's a bit of a, a political a political struggle, I guess, uh, for the chief elf going on in this as well. Um, so there's elves as well. I kind of left them out, sorry. Uh, and yeah, just a fantastic series. Uh, I, and, and once I started getting back into this storyline, it, it was like um, and I've seen some other people's reviews too. It's like revisiting old friends. I just, I remembered how much I love these characters and how much I love her writing and the stories and the, and the characters and just everything about it. So I highly recommend the series if you haven't tried it. Uh, in fact, I've already moved on to book 15, which is Million Dollar Demon. And uh, only the dead rule the hollows. <laughs> great, great covers. Everything about the series is just fantastic. So I highly recommend it. Uh, uh, the other physical book, I so that will be my next audio book, though, because I've already kind of started it. Uh, the physical book I finished reading was a reread for me. This is Teeth in the Mist by Dawn Kurtigich, and just a fantastic book. I, um, I absolutely love it. Just to go over a brief, brief synopsis of it, uh, it does take place over three different time periods. You have our present day with our main character, Zoe. She's 16 years old. Um, she's a kind of a photo, uh, what is it, a photo, photography, I can talk, photography enthusiast. Anyway, she goes to this place in, um, let's see if I can pronounce this right, Methwin, Methwin Millhouse. It's in North Wales. Uh, it's a place where her father had gone to and somehow lost his mind. Um, something happened to him there. She's always been drawn to this place and finally uh, she leaves a note for mom and kind of sneaks off with her best friend Polton to kind of investigate the place and see what what's what with this. Uh, we also go back to 1851, uh, where another character, she is uh, 17 years old. Her name is Rowan, Rowan uh, and she, along with two other wards, uh, are sent to live at Mill House. And uh, she, and along with the other two, all have sort of a secret to themselves. And um, they're all kind of wondering why they were all brought to this, this place. And there's some kind of uh, hints of... Some kind of paranormal or uh, demonic things kind of going on in this place. And then we also have uh, 1583 uh, with our main character, Hermione. She's a young bride, uh, her along with her husband, who is building Mill House. And how all these stories kind of tie together uh, and the events that take place are just so fantastic. The book is uh, full of all sorts of imagery and uh, letters and... Uh, those are sketches of organs and bodies and just, she, that's how a lot of her books are. Just They're so visually appealing. Um, but I will tell you, I was just kind of um, listening in to a sample of the audio. Uh, and uh, the audio book of this is read by like 
five different people. So it is almost like a dramatic portrayal of, uh, of the story. And it sounds really, really good. I uh, almost missed kind of having done it on, on audiobook on the second time. But anyway, um, if you have a preference for audiobooks or physical books, I think you will enjoy it either way. Really great. It was great to, like I said, revisit the story and see how it how it kind of wrapped up at that point. But the main, the main reason I went to reread it, not just because I enjoy your book so much, is because I wanted to read the sequel, which I just got recently, which is Blood on the Wind. And it's been a while since I read the first book that came out in 2019. So I wanted to refresh my memory before I dove into the sequel. So I'm really looking forward to starting this. I literally just finished that again about half an hour ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm just reeling by how much I enjoyed it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna dive right into this. This is my physical book. This is my current audiobook. And yeah, uh, the only little update I have is you'll see coming up, this will be the reference. <laughs> I had mentioned something about a puzzle I was doing, uh, and you can see an update on that just after this. And I hope you guys are reading something good. Let me know down below. And uh, do any of these sound interesting to you? Let me know if you think you might want to pick them up. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. I was working on this thousand piece Flintstone puzzle. I had a lot of fun with it. I love the Flintstones, uh, but I was finding these black and white sections the hardest to work on. Uh, but there it is. It's complete. I haven't done a puzzle in a long, long time. But like I said, I had a lot of fun doing this one. Future Sue here. One more thing I forgot to show you, only because I just discovered it after I stopped filming the video. Um, I generally take my dust jackets off because I just find them kind of cumbersome. They kind of keep sliding around while I'm trying to hold the book. Uh, and I also kind of don't want to damage them. I know the whole point of them is to protect the book. These days, everyone kind of protects the dust jackets. Uh, but I was taking the dust jacket off of Blood on the Wind. And you got to see how beautiful this book is underneath. Look at that. It's kind of an, uh, another imagery of the, um, the cover there. But just all in red. All on the spine. And even on the back, just gorgeous, beautiful detail on that one. But anyway, just had to show you that because I was just like, whoa. <laughs>